Hey guys, what's going on? It's If You Have to Pick 3, I'm Matt. And I'm Zach. If you haven't joined us for this show before, essentially what we do here is we pose a topic, each of us picks our top three in said topic, and then we fight it out for a final top three list. And if there's bloodshed, great. If not, then it wasn't a great show. Oh, I'm counting on bloodshed. Oh. Why, why would I even do this? I don't know. I came to fight. Bring it. What are we doing Brr. this week? So I'm going to start off this fight by doing my favorite thing, making you feel old. All right, go for Ready? it. What do you All got? All right. So in the year 2019, this May, the Who's Tommy turns 50 years old. This September, Green Day's American Idiot turns 15 years old. Oh, wake me up when September ends. And November, huzzah, it started. And in November... Pink Floyd's The Wall turns 40. Now, what do those three albums have in common? Well, I'm going to just tell you right now. They are among the three greatest concept albums in rock history. That most people yeah, that's, that's seem fair to, to say. agree on. It's, I mean, they're, all of those three albums are just so applauded for their creativity and just going beyond what an album is usually. So that inspired... This episode. Yes. Where Matt and I are going to determine the best concept albums of all time. The three greatest concept albums. So. I'm going to be a gentleman. I'm going to let you go first. Okay. I thought you were going to say something else, but all right, we'll go with that. I'm going to be a gentleman and mop this floor with you, with my picks. <laughs> I don't know if that was going to happen, but mm. you could try. Oh, it's time. It's all right. exciting. All so, right, Matt. Let's just clear this up right now. I'm going to start out. Number one is going to be one of the ones that we mentioned. I'm going to go with Green Ooh. Day's American Idiot. Ooh. In a time where uh, the world was in such conflict and in such disarray, uh, a band's recordings aren't even safe anymore. So Green Day at that time was recording an album after their warning album in 2000 and uh, the mastering tapes were stolen. Just up and poof. So they had to go ahead and instead of re-recording what they did, they came up with something completely new. They wanted to do a pop punk opera and we have American Idiot. I mean, the styles on this, for me, this signifies the second... Uh, the second level of Green Day. The first Green Day was everything from what they started with up until right before American Idiot. It was all, you know, pop punk and it was just, you know, straight ahead, kind of the same thing. I don't want to say over and over again because they did change it up a bit, but it wasn't what American Idiot was. American Idiot signified a change in Green Day. And it also was what everybody really needed at the time to rally underneath in music. Uh, listening to it from start to finish, it tells an amazing story. So much so that it even became, I believe it was on Broadway. Correct me yeah. if I'm wrong. No, it's a Broadway show. Yeah, it became a Broadway show. And it was just critically acclaimed since it came out. I mean, um, it was album number 22 on the 100 greatest albums of the decade, according to Rolling Stone. In the 500 greatest albums of all time. Think about how much music has been recorded. For it to sit at number 225... In that list, doesn't seem like it's a great feat, but it only came out in 2004. Yeah. So for it to be at number 225, who knows if that changes over time? You love your numbers. I do. According to Krang, it was number one, the best album of the 2000s. I mean, I completely agree with that. It's an amazing album. And in Loudwire, they did uh, their own list, the 100 best hard rock and metal albums of the 21st century. That came in at number 10. So this album... For Green Day to be considered hard rock metal, which you normally don't think about with Green Day, it came in at number 10. So I, I think this is one of the best concept albums of all time because one thing that we didn't mention at the beginning was concept albums are either very hit or very miss. Mm-hmm. You know, some bands try to put this whole thing together. Like I'm going to take, for example, uh, one of one band that I am not crazy about when it comes down to concepts is Coheed and Cambria. Hmm. A lot of people are going to disagree with me because they have this entire story that's drug out over a multitude of albums. In itself, Coheed and Cambria is a is a concept. You have to hear parts of the story on each of the albums. Doesn't really do it for me. But for something like this, I mean, where it tells everything that it needs to tell, it tells this very elaborate story throughout the entire album and just concludes and it's a masterpiece, in my opinion. So, number one. That's just one. That's just number one. Number two. 
Okay. If you disagree with me on this, I don't know if we're going to be able to pick anything else on this list. Number two, one of the best selling albums of all times, critically acclaimed from everybody across the music industry. I mean, we're talking people who have rated this album five out of five, you know, nine out of tens, eight out of tens, four out of fives. Nobody has ever given this album a garbage review who's, you know, in all the reviews I can find on this album, nobody's given it a garbage review. 45 At the time that I was checking this out, 45 over 45 million copies of this album sold alone. It is one and three quarter times diamond. Do, does it have a name? It does. <laughs> Some would say that the, uh, the album name actually uh, isn't true because all sides of the moon are dark sides of the moon. Oh, yeah. You went for a different Pink Floyd album. I went for Dark Side of the Moon. It's a concept album. Now, many people think of The Wall when they think of concepts. They did a movie. And they they have all of this theatrics that go along with it. But all of what they learned with Dark Side of the Moon took it to The Wall and just did it differently and did it a little bit bigger. But... Whenever you think of the definitive Pink Floyd album, people talk Dark Side of the Moon. It's a concept album. It explores conflict, greed, time, death, mental illness, and it also was inspired by their uh, former bass player Sid Barrett and his deteriorating health issues um, when he left the band. So, in total, this album has charted over 900 weeks for a concept album. How can you argue that that's not one of the greatest concept albums of all time? Okay, so... Number two. That was number two. Number two. What is your final pick? Third one. I feel like in all of the ones that I've looked at and all the ones that I enjoy, I think this is one of the ones that I I myself am perplexed why I like it so much. (laughs) Not because the band isn't great. Not because... The, the concept is out there, but because it's not normally what I like. When somebody who's tripping balls on acid tells you that, hey, let's, let's do this album, and in doing this album, we're going to do it as us, but as another band, and we're going to play in the style of the other band, but it's going to be us playing. I think I know where you're going with like, this, but continue. What, the, what the hell are you talking about? And then they put it together... And it's out there for the world to hear. Sergeant Pepper. Yep. I mean, you you can't think concept album without hearing Paul McCartney talking about how they want to be a band, but another band, because the other band is going to be playing the style of that band. It's like it's so it's so perfectly the Beatles in the, in that time era that when you when you just think about it in any other band saying that like picture like. James Hetfield saying, we're going to play as a band, but another band. Like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? But then the Beatles they are going to do this, and they prove that they can go weird with uh, Revolver. But then what they learn in Revolver just perfectly translated over into Sgt. Pepper. And then with the recording techniques that they used for Sgt. Pepper, actually, fun fact, it was the first album to ever be remastered with no clear segments in the tracks. Hmm. It was just meant to go. So, I think with with the concept of the Beatles playing in the style of another band, but still being the Beatles, I think it's so great. And then just the songs that come out of it, I mean, it's it's one of the best of all time. And um, on top of that, the band never played this live, hmm. ever, just simply because at that time they were done with touring. So for people to fall behind a concept album and never see it live, because they were never going to do this live. Actually, John Lennon said it best that you could have taken four wax figures of the four of them and that would have been fine. Because it wasn't about the music at that point because the Shea Stadium concert, because the technology at the time just, just wasn't there, they're playing, they can't hear themselves and the crowd can't hear them. What, 50, 60,000 screaming girls at Shea Stadium? The band never wanted to perform after, you know, 
that they were getting worn down and tired. So now that they could just concentrate in the studio and focus on the music and then tripping balls on acid and coming up with this. I mean, if it hasn't been said before about the Beatles being one of the greatest of all time, if not the greatest of all time, I mean, I think this just kind of solidifies that. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm already going to tell you, I already, I'm looking at my list right now and I'm looking and I'm hearing yours and I already have a compromise, even though I still feel like we're going to be, <laughs> I, even though I have a feeling we're still going to be fighting about something. Go on. I had different picks though, even though, yes, all three of those are classic albums. Mm-hmm. My first one is one that I mentioned already in the beginning. Okay. The Who's Tommy. Okay. The story of a deaf, dumb, and blind boy that includes his experiences of life and his relationship with the family. It really is the Who's masterpiece. Uh, they were just a great rock band before this, and finally they are just using their exceptional musical skills to create one of the most incredible records one of the most vivid stories. I mean, you mentioned American Idiot, which is one of my favorite albums. Without Tommy, American Idiot probably would not have been thought up of, or at least the idea of them doing a concept album wouldn't have, wouldn't have crossed their minds. This is going to be a hard to sell me, for you. To me, Tommy is the ultimate rock opera. It was on Broadway where it was even taken to a whole new level. And the fact that 50 years later, Tommy is still just incredible sounding it's just still moving i think makes it one of the best concept albums of all time you're gonna have a hard sell on this and i'll tell you why no no I no let me no you let me finish you let me like finish who. you shut your mouth and I you let me like finish you let me finish damn it no you let me finish i let you talk about charts and selling platinum albums and what loudwire thought of green day you let me finish <laughs> you shut it anyway your face so that was my first you shut your That was my first pick, The Who's Tommy. Second album. This one's going to be a little controversial. My Chemical Romance's The Black Parade. Now, you shut your mouth. I see. Hold on. You You shut your mouth. You let me finish. (laughs) I let you talk about what Kerrang thought of American Idiot. I'll save my piece. You stay quiet. I don't care how many record stocks I'd have sold. You shut your mouth. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that it's the best concept album out of all the albums that have been mentioned already. In fact, I'm going to just say it now. I already know it's not going to be in the, the, the final three. But I think that the concept itself, which centers around a dying character with cancer, the patient, it's just such a vivid visual that went from start to finish in this record. And I think it's actually one of Mike Campbell Romance's best albums to date. I think they're such an underrated band that kind of separated before it really saw its all its potential. But this record, I think, really showed that at a time when a lot of bands were just chasing fads or trying to be relevant. This album showed that there could still be a sense of theatrical in rock music, that rock music could still be a little over the top and still be a little dark too. The Michael Rowan went from just being an emo pop punk band to a larger than life band in a time when rock really was struggling. Um, so I think, yeah, I'm not going to lie to you right now. It's definitely not going to be the, in the final three, but I think it's a record that... For the era of 2000s when albums in general were just kind of struggling, it deserves a lot more credit than I think it gets nowadays. You're a smarter man than I thought you were. Number three. Number three. Now, again, this one I already know is not going to make the three, but I personally love it. Okay. Because if you all know me, you know how much I love Alice Cooper. And Welcome to My Nightmare, his first solo record, was Alice finally capturing his vision of being a theatrical mind freak. It's the story of Steven and it's a journey through his nightmares, essentially. It was the first record where he split with the Alice Cooper band because the Alice Cooper band just wanted to be a rock group and he was like, no, I want to up the ante of the, th- the theatrics. Billion Dollar Babies, we're getting close to it. I mean, it's one of my favorite records, that one in particular, but Welcome to My Nightmare, he finally captures the nightmare that he's been visioning. It's the persona of Alice Cooper times 10. It has so many different little genres of music from cabaret to hard rock, like songs like Black Widow, and even just the title track, Welcome to My Nightmare. It's all the potential for being the shock rock master that he is. While I might personally like other albums more, Welcome to My Nightmare is what you expect when you hear the name Alice Cooper. And I think it's an album that still sounds haunting and just playing out scary now as it did back in 1975. That's the thing, keep in mind too, that in 1975, when that record came out, it was really different. 
and it still just sounds unique. So that's my three. Alice Cooper's Welcome to My Nightmare, My Chemical Romance's Black Parade, and The Who's Tommy. Now, here's the compromise I'm going to make to you. Go on. As long as you let me keep Tommy in the in the final three, I will let you pick the other two because I love all three albums. I'm inclined to say, please keep American Idiot in there too because that's actually that was an album actually that I was struggling to not include on the, my list because it really is one of my American Idiot is one of my favorite albums of all time, not even concept albums, and I struggled not putting it on my list, but I was I decided I wanted to pick an album because I mentioned three albums at the beginning of the episode that inspired this episode so I wanted to just pick one of those records and I went with Tommy because without Tommy there'd be no American Idiot well okay so just with that you know being known American Idiot is one of my favorite records so in fact you know what I'll say this if you let me have Tommy and if you include American Idiot Mm -hmm. I'll let you pick the third record here's gonna be where I'm gonna go The Beatles okay with Sgt. Pepper that was the concept album. We get it. It's an amazing album. What's your compromise? Okay. You you heard my deal. What will I, you? What's your counter? My counter is my top three. No, that's bullshit. <laughs> no. Okay. You're telling. You, hold on. You can't. How can you pick between Dark Side of the Moon and Sergeant Pepper? Because hold on. First off, to, how can you not include Tommy? It's one I, of the most amazing concept albums of all time. Because I don't like the Who. It's a great. That's just crazy. No, it's not. I don't like the Who. All right, new comp. Here's my <laughs> new deal. Fine, little baby over here. As long as you allow the Who's Tommy into the final three, mm-hmm. you can pick the other two. <sighs> all right. As much as oh god, I don't like the Who. I really don't. I. And a lot of people are going to dislike this and a lot of people are going to come and say that I'm stupid because you know what? I am and I don't like The Who. I've never, I but never have. such I've, a great rock I group. just find them boring. How? I, because they fall into that traditional 70s thing for me where it's like we, we have to be ultra serious about our, our. How can you look me in the eye and tell me that Pinball Wizard is not an I'm incredible not saying, song? I'm not saying it's not a great song. I just don't like The Who. Ugh, I hate you. Okay. <laughs> he sure plays a mean pinball. Mm-hmm. No, I, I. All right. All right. Fine. This is my con. That's yep. my ahead. final deal. Your final deal. If you let me have Tommy in the final three, <sighs> you can pick the other two. Because I, I love all three of the albums that you picked. Okay. For me, I have to keep Dark Side of the Moon. Okay. I have to. It's one of my favorite albums of all time. There are so many stories behind the album. It is one of the best albums of. Uh, of music like in, in music's entirety it's one of the best things that's ever been recorded it, it's a performance in itself in the studio at the time they didn't have any of the technology that we have now so they're there as a band they're like playing with faders and people are like on cues and doing different things so it's very interesting how that album was recorded then the concept of the Beatles and Sgt. Pepper and all of the techniques and everything that went into that it's a performance on its own and the reason why I was having a hard time when you're saying Green Day because Green Day in itself, it's a great concept. They went to Broadway, did everything that it needed to do. It's a great album, one of the best of the 2000s, but it's missing that backstory. The the stories that come from those albums and listening to the way that the bands are called and the people who were in the studio at the time and what they did to get certain things and how that album to tell its story, has a story in itself, to me, makes those other two albums the clear choices. So before I I have you cement those picks, it's interesting you mentioned about the story, the concept itself of American Idiot. Um, Even though I kind of would argue that the concept's a little bit more clearer than Sgt. Pepper's, but that's beside the point. Um, As I said before, Green Day's American Idiot is is one of my favorite records of all time. Mm Mm-hmm. However, this is a side conversation, by the way, for those listening. I would actually argue that when it comes to the concept of an album, like the actual concept, the story that the album is following, I actually think 21st Century Breakdown by Green Day is a stronger concept. And you might be right with that. Maybe um, they honed it in, but the album is not as strong. No, it's not as strong. And Which, fun fact, in May... Of 2019, it celebrates its 10-year anniversary. That album came out. Shut 10 years your mouth ago. with making me feel old. Yeah, 
I like making you feel old. That came out 10 years ago. Um, and it's interesting because I, cause I was actually gonna ask that we review that album in particular. Cause I have a lot of thoughts about that record. What do you think? Should we review that? Let us know. Let us know. Comment on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at Epic Footnote. Let us know if you're sure. But in short, that's an album that if they had cut a few songs and maybe even a few seconds on songs here and there, it could have been a lot better of an album. Because I think visually the story itself is actually better than American Idiot. With that said, musically, American Idiot is superior. Yes. Uh, But I think 21st Century Breakdown does not get enough credit. And it often gets lumped in as the unofficial sequel to American Idiot in that well, how could it, really, you not? it really was kind of released in response to how amazing it that album really never got a fair chance. Well partially because it was a little bloated in areas, but also something to keep in mind, by the time that 21st Century Breakdown was being released, the band was already starting to promote the American Idiot Broadway show. Right. So I mean like, how could you think it's not the bastard stepchild of it? No, absolutely. I mean American Idiot was so massive. Right. When it came out, that it took five years for the momentum of American Idiot to slowly start to die down. That's how popular that album was. Well, but I digress. Maybe tune in for another episode of Two Minutes to Review to hear maybe if we review 21st Century Breakdown. We'll see. All right. But so it sounds like you've come to terms as to which two other two albums for well, if you have to pick three best concept albums. Let me, ask, let me ask this then. Just one last thing before I cement it. Okay. Are you, with that explanation of American Idiot, are you sure you yes. want Tommy? Yes. You're because sure. without Tommy, Green Day were so influenced by The Who. And if you listen to the style, because like, a lot of people were quick to you know, pinpoint about like some of the Queen influences, mm-hmm. but Billy Joe Armstrong was always quick to be like, oh no, we were more influenced by The Who. Okay. Without Tommy. Did uh, they do it better than Tommy? No. You Tommy so. is, is a masterpiece. Okay. And I am disgusted with you that you don't agree. Sorry. I am I just don't. disgusted. All right. So the final top three is going to be The Beatles, Sgt. Pepper, Dark Side of the Moon, Pink Floyd, and Green... No. <laughs> <laughs> and The Who's Tommy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going for look the behind, Look behind these blue eyes and tell me that I'm wrong. You're wrong. Bull. I'll look, Pure I'll bull. Look, I'll see through to the real you. And that real you, which is not the real me... Is wrong. You don't even know the lyrics, you jerk. No, I just totally went from Stain to The Who. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually even more insulting than everything you said about The Who, is that you went from Stained to The Who. Well, I went from The Who to The Stain to The Who. If you share my disgust. <laughs> um, no, let us know what you think. What are your favorite concept albums? Do you think we're wrong? Let us know. We'd love to hear from you, and we hope you join us for another episode. Take it easy, guys. <laughs>